All right, y'all, back in Simeo. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about some tips and tricks that you can use to debug or verify your model. So let's say you have your model here, and it's working. Uh, maybe it's not working exactly the way that you want it to, or you wanted to check to see if it was working in a way that you wanted it to. So there are three things that we're going to look at. The first one is the animation tab. So here I'm in the facility view, the facility tools. If I click on animation, I might have shown you these before, but you have the ability to, to put um, some plots down that can help keep track of certain things in your model. So let's just use something like a status label. So this is just a place to put a number. And why is that useful? Well, let's say I wanted to look at something like I was interested in uh, the queue at fast food one. I could do something like fast food one dot uh, processing dot. Uh, oh no, not processing. I want to look at the input buffer. Input buffer dot contents. And when I go to run the model, let's just run it. You'll see that the number will change depending on how many people are in line. And this can be helpful um, because sometimes these queues, uh, they're not going to show you all of the number of entities. Uh, this is just kind of a simple example, um, but you can look at any expression that generates a value. You can put a little status plot. All right, let's stop. What about uh, seeing behavior of, uh, of a number or a statistic over time? Uh, there's another type of thing in the animation tab called a status plot. So this creates a plot. So if I click and expand it. Now I have to put an expression here that's a number. So let's use our time weight stat and the average of it. And then I'll just call the label time weight. OK, so when I run this, you're going to see that it's going to generate a chart of values that uh, will adjust over time over the run of the simulation. This could be very useful for seeing behavior over time, for assessing for a warm up period, perhaps. So let's run it and we'll see how that plot looks. So initially, the time wait starts off at zero, but over time it starts to climb up because the average wait time is increasing. And you can see that as the simulation runs, it seems like the value, which is here in minutes, is pretty static after we've entered, you know, about uh, the first 33 percent of the simulation. So, um, yeah, it's starting to climb over time as the simulation fills up, but effectively it was uh, pretty stable there. Um, these are just two examples of things that you can use to debug or verify your model. All right, so now let's talk about something that's a little bit more advanced. It's called the model trace. So the model trace records every single event that occurs in the simulation. So I'm going to click this. You might see a little uh, a window pop up. And when I click run, you're going to see this populate with every single event. So you can see that there's a timestamp, there's a time in the simulation in minutes, and there's all of these different entity related steps. So let's step into and see what the most recent thing was. So here it looks like online customer 107 uh, had some process that it entered, and then there was a process that occurred here. This is very detailed, and you can use the information that's in here. You can actually even filter. So let's say I wanted to only look at my um, my end weight process. I could filter that, and I can look at all the different times that the end weight process was triggered and how the process uh, occurred. OK, now there's one other uh, feature that I want to use in conjunction with the model trace, and that is a breakpoint. So breakpoints, you can you can actually uh, institute a breakpoint on any process block or any um, service block. So if I click here, I can actually add a breakpoint. So anytime something uh, an entity enters into this block, it'll stop the model. 
and it'll allow you to observe the current state before you run until the next breakpoint. So that's not a very useful breakpoint. Um, let's do something like in the process tab. I click on this block, right? So click on this tally block and I click breakpoint. So what that does is puts this little stop sign with a pause symbol on it and it allows me to when I run from the facility view, it will run until oh, stopped at a breakpoint. So now what this allows me to do is to look at the trace and see what is happening in the model immediately prior to the process occurring. So I'm going to take off this filter for the process. You can see that this customer 21 was entering the queue at fast food one and the process was on it entered input buffer and it, it tried to see some resources and then it executed my own process. So uh, you can use breakpoints. Um, you can use the model trace. Actually, if you run this, you can see that it's tracing to a specific location. It'll output all of the events into a single CSV file that you can scrub through and filter for certain things if you wanted to look at exactly how your model runs. I hope you found that useful uh, when it comes to debugging and verifying and validating your model. Uh, best of luck and happy modeling.